Hey guys, for those who don't know me, uh, because you stumble on this video by searching for the topic uh, of the video instead of but myself. Uh, so you might not know me. My name is Christian Thibodeau. I'm, a, I'm an international level strength and conditioning coach. I've trained athletes in over 28 different sports for more than 20 years. I've also published several books. I've given seminars in over 15 countries, and I've also written over 600 articles on training for strength, size, and athletic performance. Now, the topic I want to cover today actually touches two of my passions, which is strength training and golf. I actually used to compete in golf as a junior. I, I stopped playing the game for several years and got back to it seriously this year. In fact, I, I'm probably practicing more golf than I'm training at the moment. Now, the topic I want to cover, and it has been the odd topic in the world of golf, is the physical changes uh, and also leading to an increase in performance of Bryson DeChambeau. Now, Bryson gained like almost like half his body weight, it seems. He, he gained like... 35, 40 pounds and increased is driving distance tremendously, averaging over 350 yards in one tournament. And not only that, he actually is playing pretty darn good because since the end of lockdown, he did uh, have three top 10 finishes as well as one win. So it is not just bobbing the ball, the ball out there, he's actually playing really good golf. So I want to discuss my view, my opinion on the changes he made. Now, I don't want to get too much into like the swing changes and more of the, the, the golf technique aspect. That, this has been covered quite a bit in several videos uh, so far, the swing changes he made, uh, the equipment changes he made. I want to talk about the physical changes. Uh, are they possible? Is it something that most people can hope to achieve? And if so, what do they need to do to get there? And how much of that weight gain and strength gain actually contributed to his increase in driving performance? Because maybe that's not the only thing that led to that dramatic, dramatic increase in driving distance. Now, let's look at the numbers, right? It, it, it basically increased his body weight by 35 to 40 pounds in roughly a six-month period. Uh, more precisely, he had like two stints of roughly three months where he gained 20 pounds each. During the lockdown, he had an, another extra 20 pounds in the three months where he stopped playing. Uh, he already had like been on a bulking quest uh, in which he had it previously 20 pounds, leading to a, another increase in driving distance. Now, a lot of people are commenting on the internet like, oh, it must be on the roids or something like that, or it's not realistic. You can't gain 40 pounds of muscle in six months, yada, yada, yada. Well, I would actually agree that it's not possible to gain 40 pounds of muscle naturally uh, for most people. Uh, however, when you look at the changes that Bryson made to his physique, he did not gain 40 pounds of muscle. He probably did not gain 20 pounds of muscle. Uh, I'm not saying that he got fat. His body composition, like the percentage of body fat and percentage of muscle mass, probably stayed roughly the same. But when we look at uh, the new Bryson, you can definitely say that he did gain a lot of muscle mass. This is especially noticeable on his back, glutes, and legs. But we also see that he has added some fat. I mean, he, he has a much thicker waist, his neck is much thicker, and, and his face is much more bloated. I already had a square jaw, but now it looks bigger. It's not because of steroids, it's just because he's retaining more fat and water in his head, making him look a lot bulkier. So, so if we look at the numbers, my estimation based on what I'm seeing from a body composition perspective. And keep in mind that, yes, it's a guess, but I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've been working with people changing their body composition dramatically. And I would estimate that you probably gained something like 15 pounds of muscle tissue. With 15 pounds of muscle tissue will automatically come around six pounds of intramuscular glycogen weight, uh, other tissue that is that are not fat but not muscle either, which is part of the lean mass component. And he probably had it like something like 18 pounds, 20 pounds of fat. 
which is not unusual for someone who is not taking steroids and decides that he wants to add lots of muscle. It's called bulking. And it's pretty well accepted among bodybuilding circles that if you want to add rapidly muscle mass, you will need to gain about an equivalent amount of fat to reach that amount of muscle growth as fast as possible. So if one, if one wanted to gain 20 pounds of muscle super fast, you would need to probably accept a 20 pounds gain in, in fat just because of the sheer amount of food you're, pulling, you're, you're putting down to achieve that muscle growth. Now, of course, you can gain muscle without having to add as much body fat, but it's a much, much, much longer process. Now, so with that being out of the way, so he probably did not gain 40 pounds of muscle. It was more like 20 pounds. And in fact, when you look at his, his physique, I, I'm, I'm actually like reading the comments on several YouTube videos. Oh, he must be on the right, dude. You probably have no clue what a, an enhanced drug physique looks like because to me, there is absolutely nothing that screams steroids with, with that physique. It's a totally achievable look. It basically looks like a big, a big, strong farm boy, just someone who just ate a lot and trained hard. It's certainly not something, an unrealistic look. However, the speed at which he gained the weight is something that we need to, to, to question. Is it possible? It is if you basically make it your life goal for that moment to achieve that weight gain. Uh, keep in mind that he, he had a very low life stress. I mean, he has no financial problems. He was not working, not playing golf at that moment because of the lockdown. So that's much less energy expenditure. Uh, no stress, like you don't have kids. He doesn't have any jobs to worry about. And that means a lot. It's much harder to build muscle when you have a lot of outside stress. You could actually devote the whole day to training and eating and recovering. That makes a big difference. Now, when we look at the normal human physiology, the average person can hope to gain roughly 40 pounds of muscle in his life if he devotes his life to training hard and getting as much muscle as possible. So if you're passionate about building as much muscle as possible, your genetic potential to build muscle is likely 40 pounds above what your normal adult body weight would have been. Now, if I look at my family, most guys are in a 175, 180 range, one lean. So that would have been my, my prob probable adult weight and the highest I've reached was around 220. Uh, so that's around that range. And normally most people can achieve actually the first half of that growth very rapidly. So within a year, a year and a half, normally if you are very steady with your training and you do everything right to gain muscle, you can gain 20 pounds in that first year or first 18 months of training, uh, which is what Bryson did in half that time, which is not totally unheard of. I've trained athletes who have gained 15 to 20 pounds of muscle in six to seven months because they were pro athletes and they didn't, didn't have any outside stress. They could basically devote their whole life to, to their body, which may, may, makes a big difference. So personally, I, I am not overly shocked or surprised by the amount of weight he was able to add in that period. I've seen it with people who are totally dedicated. However, because in golf, most people who are following golf are not like into the hardcore training world, f to them, those changes seems completely out there. But the fact that is that it's not pure muscle. It, 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 he gained a lot. He probably got a lot stronger, but it's not unrealistic. Now, let's look at how much did that increase in body weight could actually contribute to increasing his, his golf performance, and especially his driving distance. Well, it probably did, but not for the reasons most people think. Of course, getting stronger can help you apply more force to the club. And if you apply more force to the club, you're going to be able to create more acceleration, meaning more club head speed. The reason is simple. It's a formula called force equals mass times acceleration. The mass you have to move and the acceleration you are imparting on that resistance, on that mass, depend on the force you're applying. In golf, the mass you're trying to move is the club. The club weight doesn't change. 
So if I'm getting stronger, I can apply more force to the same mass. More force applied to the same mass leads to more acceleration or more club at speed. So there's no doubt that getting stronger could help you swing faster. However, in my opinion, that's not the main reason why getting stronger and especially larger, because keep in mind, he did not gain all muscle, but even the fat he gained could actually help him in some regard. Now let's look at the impact of the added body weight and strength. First is gonna have a, a positive impact on the stability and anchoring. Basically, a heavier body weight applies more force on the ground, he's more stable. Uh, try to flip a small rock on the floor or try to flip a heavy rock on the floor, it's much harder to unscrew or move around that bigger rock. So if he has a bigger body weight on that floor, when he's applying all that speed, he's going to stay a lot more stable, which allows him to keep some precision in his swing. Uh, and keep the contact condition, the impact condition, the launch condition more stable because his body doesn't move around because of all the force he's producing. But more importantly, that added strength will improve his capacity to decelerate the club once he hit that ball. Okay, that's the most important thing because your body will not allow you to accelerate the club so fast that the deceleration after impact will be dangerous. Most injuries in a golf swing don't occur during the backswing. They don't occur during the initial phase of the downswing or at impact. They occur in the follow through. When you have built all that speed in a downswing and now you need to come to a halt during that follow through, which is shorter than the whole backswing, but you have so much speed you need to go from, let's say 130 miles an hour in Bryson's case to zero at the end, very short path. That's where you have to have that strong muscle to break that speed, use as a break. If you don't have enough strength or even size, you will actually need to rely on your structures, your tendons, your ligaments, your joints to passively absorb the force and that will lead to an increased risk of injury, okay? That's why, for example, for him, the gaining all that weight and strength will help him avoid injury in the future while swinging out of his shoes. Because that's one thing I believe, right? I think that a lot of the distance he gained actually comes from the fact that he decided to pull out all the stops and just swing out of the shoes, literally, on all of his drives. Yes, some of that speed comes from the added strength, no, no doubt. Some of it will come from change in his swing because he did change several things in his, in his golf swing that led to more speed. But more importantly, he actually changed his mindset. I'm gonna swing that driver as hard as humanly possible, okay? And that which led to a lot of speed. But because of the size he has, he will actually reduce the risk of injury. If you look at a guy like Cameron Champ, who, who swings at a fairly similar speed, maybe a slightly slower, but he's still in the 130 range, but he, he, he suffered from a lot of back injuries. <coughs> Tiger Woods, when he was swinging super fast in the beginning of his career, also had back issues. The reason, in my opinion, is that these guys didn't have the size or the strength to be able to safely decelerate all of that speed. There was a great video done by the guys at TXG, Tour Experience Golf. You can look them up on YouTube, awesome channel, in which they duplicated some of the change that Bryson did when it comes to his equipment, like lower lofted drivers, stiffer shaft, higher uh, higher T, uh, changing the launch angle, uh, and just swinging out of his mind. Matt Blois was actually able to duplicate the gains that Bryson made on his driving distance. But what he commented was that if I swing any faster, I'm gonna pull my back out. He was actually like, that's the last thing I'm doing because I'm gonna injure myself. And of course, he's not a big guy like Bryson is. And that's where, in my opinion, the size is the most beneficial. It actually allows him to keep training that high driver speed without risking injuries. Ask any long distance competitor and it will comment that they, they actually 
are prone to injuries simply because of all the speeds they must produce when they're training for long driving. And for a while, Bryson during the lockdown actually trained pretty much like a long distance guy, just focusing on hitting that driver day in and day out as hard as humanly possible that takes its toll. Having that size, that muscle mass, that strength allowed him to keep training at super maximal speed without injuring himself so he can actually keep on practicing accelerating. I believe that a lot of tour players actually have the potential to be just as quick as Bryson is. The, but, but to reach that, they actually need to do what he did. Not so much the, the, the strength or the size gain, but practicing hitting that driver out of their mind for three months every single day. And to do that, you need to have the body to withstand the shock. And to me, that was the greatest benefit of the strength and size gains, allowing him to be able to train that driver swinging out of his shoes every single day without injuring himself. Ask anybody, take any tour player or anybody who can actually produce some speed, every day go out and hit 50 balls as hard as humanly possible with a driver. Don't worry about where it's going, just swing out of your shoes. I guarantee they will get injured or will have to skip some of the training sessions because of, of aches and pains. But the stronger, the bigger you are, the more you can absorb that and decelerate that force, the lower your risk of injury will be. That's why you see all of these uh, long drive competitors like uh, be big into strength training. Of course, you have smaller guys like, like Jamie Sadlowski, like, like Kyle Berkshire, who are not as huge, but these guys are just naturally super quick. They don't have to swing as much out of their mind as the less efficient guys. But most of these guys are, are beasts in the gym, not necessarily to increase the distance, even though they might think that is the main benefit. The main benefit is getting stronger and bigger allows them to keep practicing swinging out of their shoes without risking injuries. So to me, that was the main benefit of the added size. Now, was it the sole purpose, the sole reason why he increased his driving distance? No, in fact, it was simply something that allowed him to do what he needed to do to gain the distance, which was to practice swinging super fast. It's exactly like the super speed sticks, the, the system that many of the pros use to increase their swing speed. Basically, it, it, it's a weight, weighted sticks that you swing as fast as possible, trying to beat the number. Then you will take uh, different types of swing to increase your, 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 your speed. Uh, basically, just training your body to go fast and more importantly, to decelerate after producing that speed because the better you are at decelerating, the more your body will allow you to accelerate because it feels safe to do so. Bulking up simply allowed him to do that kind of work, swing out of his shoes, swing super fast without risking injury. So he was able to do it day in and day out, improving. What led to the speed increase was simply practicing swing as fast as humanly possible. Okay, the size and strength gains simply allowed him to do that safely with maybe a slight improvement uh, in swing speed coming from the strength gains. Um, other factors that, that are not to be neglected, he did make some swing changes. He used to be a purely single plane guy, not anymore. In fact, when you see his driving swing, you can easily see a change of plane. He does shallow the club on a downswing during the transition. It's pretty obvious. Uh, he still has the single plane set up with the arm fully extended, the wrist fully locked. But after his backswing, he actually shallows the club to gain more speed. He also has a much, uh, much more of a squatting action with his lower body, much like Rory does, which he didn't have before. So these changes did contribute to increasing his speed quite a bit. He also changed his, his launch characteristics. He changed his driver loft to five degrees while increasing the angle of attack to an upward of five degrees. Those who know about, dy about dynamic loft and spin loft know that if you have a five degrees face angle and a five degree upward launch, you basically have no spin loft. So it allows him to keep the spin very low while having a very high launch angle. High launch, low spin, best condition for driving distance. But in my opinion, the biggest difference was the focus change. Now he's just trying to kill that ball every time he's on the course. Uh, if you saw the driving competition held 
with the uh, the, the the tailor-made guys uh, during the lockdown, you can see that you know what guys like Rory, guys like Matt Wolf, guys like DJ, when they swing out of their shoes, they can actually hit it pretty much as far as Bryson does. The main difference is that they don't swing like that often, if at all, on the golf course. Bryson made the bet, you know what, I'm going to swing out of my shoes because the risk is worth the reward. And he practiced hitting like that for three months, day in and day out, so he actually built some control in that swing. So that's why I believe that he gained all that distance. That along with the increase in confidence from feeling strong, feeling physically dominating, that can change your mindset. Now he has more of an attacking mindset. Uh, all of these, in my opinion, are, are the reasons for uh, the, the increase in driving distance. So yes, getting stronger and bigger can help you get faster. But just because you go on a bulk and, and you lift like crazy, it doesn't mean you will swing any faster. It simply allows you to do the work that will allow you to gain swing speed without getting injured. A lot of people might be looking at Bryson, well, I'm gonna bolt like crazy, I'm gonna have 7,000 calories a day, I'm gonna like had 40 pounds, uh, some of it muscle and some of it is fat, and that might not be the healthiest thing to do from a uh, like cardiovascular perspective, for example, joint perspective. And then you're going to end up not swinging any faster because the real work that allowed him to swing faster was practicing swinging faster. But he has a swing that allows him to swing fast without risking like driving completely out of the park because his swing has very few variables. But again, the strength, the size, it's only a tool to allow him to do the speed work safely. So I hope that you didn't find this too boring. I think it's a different angle of a very cool topic. I think that Bryson is very polarizing. Uh, it was actually polarizing even before the driving distancing with the single length club, with the overly scientific approach to the game, uh, with the slow play, uh, sometimes the emotional reactions. So you either really like him or you really don't like him. I, I personally like him. I like what he's doing. Uh, but he was already polarizing for, for, for before that and, and even more now. So it's a pretty cool topic. I, I really hope that it will make golfers more aware of the benefits of training uh, for golfing performance. But just because you're getting bigger and stronger doesn't mean you will hit it longer. It increases your potential to train for speed. That's a difference. So hope you enjoy it. See you guys next time.